today's drawing, we're going to be doing a drawing that's going to put you right in the middle of the action. Okay, just imagine this. Imagine that you're a lizard cruising along. You see this big, fat, grubby looking thing. You think, oh, I'll have a chomp on that. You go in for a chomp. Suddenly beside you, the leaves, the leaf mulch, it explodes. And then, whack! Just being hit by the fastest venomous snake in Australia, the Death Adder. It lays around in wait, it just, you know, lures in something with its little tail, and then whack, it gets it. Let's get back to the studio. We've got some drawing to do on my brand new drawing desk. New piece of paper. Don't need my hat. Need something to draw with. Pencil, this will do. Let's get here into we it. go. We're going to draw a bit of a lizard here, and they're going to have the snake striking it hard. Dragon has got a really nice, long, beautiful tail. And Dragon's got big legs, kind of like a frog's legs. We're just chucking in some rough shapes here. The arm's out like that. So it's grabbed hold of what it thinks is a big worm. It's actually the tail of the Death Adder. And the Death Adder's gone whack! Smacked right in! Pumping venom into that poor little body. So we're just quickly roughing this through. We're going to make the body come around here. And leaves are going to be flying everywhere. Foom! Whack! So I'm doing this fast, crazy, quick drawing. And you've got to do that sometimes. You've got to act as if you don't care. I think we better go have a look at a death adder. See what they look like. It's a, such a gorgeous snake. It's such a wonderful, unique snake. It looks like nothing else in Australia. So here I am sketching this one here in New South Wales with a reptile bloke. Top bloke, reptile bloke. Check out his channel. This beautiful camouflage one's here is in Western Australia. And this is done with the help of Brian Bush. Such a fantastic creature. So I've got these wonderful sketches. This is going to help me do this drawing. So I'm putting an eye in here. Like a lot of venomous snakes, there seems to be a bit of a groove or a gully going from the eye to the nose so I can see forward. One eye's there. It bulges out. Just behind the eye, it sort of bulges out a bit where the jawline is, where the venom sacs are. So they've got these big chubby heads. So the other eye's over there. Bit of a bulge there. And then behind the eye, bulging out again, giving you that sort of arrowhead, death head of shape. It's going to make a little bit go straight. And then a little bit of a thing, like it's gone whack! And got that poor lizard. And they've got this little slit for the eye. A little bit of a scar right in the center between the eyes. A few little scars coming out from there. And in comes these little solar panel scales right there. So these are kind of fairly typical arrangements of scales for a lot of snakes. So you can pause this video at any stage and catch up to have a look at this wonderful thing. I remember the first time I sketched one of these guys. It was an incredible experience up in Queensland. It even checked out the drawing after I did one. Harsh art critics, but sometimes that's what happens with art. Let's get some scales happening here. We're going to mark it out a little bit. First, we're going to mark in where the spine is. So I'm doing fairly quick lines. As I, as I go towards the top of that, they get narrower and more narrow each time because it's curving around the body. But on the other side here, kind of same size. These are guidelines. And you've got to chuck down these guidelines to make this work. Now, if there's any part of this that doesn't work, just draw a leaf in front of it, because these leaves are exploding everywhere. Now, we're popping in like a brick-like pattern. Sometimes when I do this, I sort of imagine a big sphinx or a big Egyptian structure that's made out of these amazing bricks in the shape of a snake. Wouldn't that be cool? So I'm going to speed up the video here because this is going to be boring. You can stop, pop in those bricks if that's what you're drawing. We're also going to chuck a pattern on this guy as well. And that's going to disguise some of the scales. So really, you only have to get this half right. The rest is going to be hidden. It's the magic of drawing. So it's great action shot is going to be a little bit confusing so we're going to have to make some things stand out so we can see what's happening so what's going to stand out is what i'm drawing now the head the neck 
and the poor lizard copping a, a gut full of venom. So check out this. I'm doing a zigzag line, like connecting the bricks. Have a really close look at this. It's kind of fun. It's very therapeutic, really. I kind of enjoy it. So this is an easy way of doing scales. Or if you want to do honeycombs or fish or all kinds of things. A very handy little trick to do here. So I'm going to speed this up again because it's going to take way too long. But if you are actually drawing along, just pause the video, catch up, and see you on the other side of this. So because this neck is the main feature, this is probably the most important place to put these scales. And that's kind of why I'm sort of really putting a lot more effort into this here. We want to see really well. Newspaper article from 1911. A death at his bite. While James Mitchell, a young man, was engaged at Byron Bay in effecting some repairs to a steam boiler, he knelt on a death adder, which was 18 inches long. The reptile bit Mitchell on the knee. The man was urged to have the wound scarified, but he absolutely refused, and afterwards, attended by a doctor, he died a few hours later. So I'm just drawing sections here, because some of it's hidden behind the leaves. So those sections you can concentrate and make really cool. And the rest, like I say, it's the old sneaky smoke and mirrors of hiding something behind leaves. And what you'll find with snakes is as they turn, as they turn their coil, the inner scales will bunch up, the outer scales will stretch out a little bit. And that's why this brick technique is really good to get that. So if you're doing this and you, and you sort of think there's one little bit that doesn't look right, chuck a leaf over top of it. The Death Adder's Fatal Bite from 1942. A bite by a Death Adder as he left the beach after surfing at Evan Head on Tuesday has caused the death of a leading aircraftsman, Ivan Stewart, 20, who later died at the Lismore Beach Hospital. The Adder bit him on the finger and when he was taken to hospital, he failed to respond after two hours treatment with the iron lung respirator. That's, that's, uh, yeah, that's a bad bite, isn't it? Okay, now let's get the tail in here. They use that tail as a caudal lure, so they'll wiggle that around like a little worm and often I see them doing it um, when I, on feeding night, you'll, they know they're getting fed and you'll see them wiggling their tail around, it looks like a little worm and you can see that the tip of the tail is a slightly different colour than the rest of the body and um, what that does is in, in the wild, so the rest of the snake will be camouflaged and that little tail is wiggling and a bird <coughs> will see that or Another small animal will see that and think, oh, I've got some lunch, and they come along and they become lunch. So, therapeutic to get there and just draw those little scales, little scale by scale by scale. So, I don't know what uh, meditation's like. They say it's good. I guess it must be something like this. I just want to be doing something when I'm uh, just chilling out and relaxing. And this is a great escape from all of life's worries. Now, what you want to do, if you want to get good at this, is you've got to draw things that don't really matter. In, and what I mean by that is um, the best drawings you do, usually the freeing up ones, you notice how quick I'm going, I'm just sort of scribbling it in there. It's because um, if you don't show anybody this, this could just be, you know, just you and this video, you can have it just have a go if you don't have to show anybody you haven't got that stress and that worry of oh you know people are going to judge me if you do that you what you might find is that hey that's actually not too bad you're doing all right and it's because you have sort of taken that stress off this should not be a stressful thing this should be fun and exciting and an escape from the, you know from, from taxes, from bureaucrats, from school bullies, from, you know, the boss at work. You, you come home and you've got complete control over this page and you get to decide what you want to do on the page. That's the fun of drawing. Sorry, I went off on a little rant. Let's get back into this. So I'm fairly familiar with this animal here. This is a little mountain dragon. And we're checking out the distribution on this. 
to make sure that it overlaps with a common death adder. So these guys would cross over, come across each other. It's quite possible that this poor lizard could end up as Tucker for a death adder. Chuck that to the side. I think I can draw a lizard just uh, out, of the, out of my head, basically, because I've caught a few of these guys before. Kind of a triangular head. Well, probably the only difference I've done from the first sketch is probably going to rough it up a few places. The photo was just enough to give me a good idea on how the little hands, the little fingers go. Where the death head is biting and it's pumping the venom in, it sort of squashed the poor lizard down a bit. The other thing is the lizard has these cool sort of zigzaggy patterns. It's interesting when these guys are cold, the lizard tends to be very dark, but when it's very warm, you can see those patterns and they lighten up a bit. Nice long claws, nice fingers there. Kind of roughly following the pattern I did before. So I wasn't too far out, just correcting the toes a little bit. Next, a lovely tail with a bit of pattern on it. Yeah, pattern should be up a little bit. And nice swishy tail. Chuck a bit of leaf on there. Because the leaves are exploding everywhere. If you had many on call outs. As in death adders. Oh, as in death adders? Yeah. I get the occasional one. Yeah. I don't get a lot of death adder call outs. People don't seem to see them very much around here. I think because of their cryptic nature. Yeah. They go unnoticed a lot of the time. There's, there's plenty of them around. I have caught a few. I'm going to chuck some ink on this. Usually I use a paintbrush and Indian ink, but today I'm just going to use, I don't know, a marker. Just use a little marker pen. I think it's a copy marker or something. There's a little brush nib. So you can ink with anything you want. Ink with a ballpoint pen if you want to. And so what I do here with the inking, basically just going over the outlines again, but I might just put the occasional little interesting bit in. So after I do all this inking, what I will do is I'll get an eraser and I'll just erase all the lines away. So I'm gonna erase a little bit here to leave a light sort of white sheen on the snake there. So now I'm just scribbling in some dark bits. There's a few bits I don't have to draw scales on. Popping the scales in between the bands. So I'm just chucking them in. Put them down pretty careful, but now I'm really just roughly throwing it in. Here's a little trick you can do. Whenever you are using just straight ink, the lines underneath make it thick and heavy. And on top, Make it really thin and light. Heavy line, of course it's casting a bit of a shadow. Where I've erased a bit there, where it goes up to the black, I might just put the scales in the black, but not any sort of shading on it. Sometimes when you see things in shadow like here, they disappear. But sometimes in the light, they also disappear. So you see there's bits there that I'm not putting in. And sometimes you gotta persist with it. You sort of think, oh, it's not really working. And uh, well, just keep going with it. What do you got to lose? Just push it to the limit. Now, if it doesn't work, just chuck it away and never show anybody. No harm done. And you've done some exercise. But if it does work, sometimes it shows, shows that you're not as bad as you think you are. Sometimes it's about seeing it through to the end and not giving up. So we're smashing through this now. Let's just uh, speed up a bit here. Put a little bit of shade there on the light part. A couple of lines. And I'm just going to chuck some leaves on there. Nice organic shapes. Yeah, let's chuck a little twig in there. Why not? Yeah, maybe put some tiny little gum nuts on there. It's a good Aussie snake. So we're chucking in some serious leaf mulch here with lots of eucalyptus trees or gum trees. And considering how small the snake is, we have put some big gum leaves in there to give it some scale. Oh, I think a sick insect's taking a big chunk out of that leaf. So as you can see, these leaves don't have to be perfect. Bit of dash, dash, dash shade on that one. Chuck some more scales in there. Okay, so these scales are under the leaf here. So I'm going to put some shady bits around the edges. We're going to colour in some of the scales and give it a bit of shade to make the leaf stand out. 
Again, nice heavy outline. Let's say make it even thicker. Yay, that's the way. Another leaf goes on top there. It's got a wibbly wobbly kind of leaf shape. Chuck a bit of shade there where it's touching the ground. Another big leaf there. So you can see I'm not being too fussed about this. So I'm just going to put a few wiggly bits on there. I'll pop some shade here where the, uh, where the bands are, where the pattern is. And then we're going to fill in the rest of the scales here. Away we go. Smash through this, just the same way as I'm doing all the others. I'm not sure if this is an advanced lesson or what. I hope you guys are enjoying anyway. So you just got to smash this out and don't be afraid of making mistakes. I'm always making mistakes. I'm a professional artist and I often just screw things up and chuck in the bin. So you never get to the point where you're absolutely perfect or mistake free. You've just got to just get to the stage where you're enjoying it and you're not stressed about it. So every time you make a mistake, it's a learning experience. And if you can master this, what better way to express your passion for all sorts of wildlife? Well, some of these leaves are getting a bit crinkly, but that's what they are. They're falling to the ground. They're starting to wrinkle up a bit. See, the leaves aren't perfect. So that's cool. Yes, this is what uh, your death adder does. Sits under leaves all day, lures in, and then boom, an explosion of leaves. So these leaves are flying everywhere. Stick a hole in that leaf. You can see another leaf on the other side of that hole. Okay, going well now. So here we're sort of popping in more leaves. Um, so it's mostly just the head that's come out. So a lot of the body's still hidden under the leaves. All the action with these guys is head and tail. The rest of their bodies are really chubby. They're not a real fast thing. Not like they're going to chase something down. Fast at striking. They're Australia's fastest striking venomous snake. But they're not the fastest at running. They've just got these fat chubby little bodies. So definitely an ambush predator. 35 year old male up at um, Broome. And he was the caretaker of the gun club. He didn't like knocking snakes on the head. But he had this small black headed snake. And thought it was a juvenile black headed python. He was showing his nine-year-old boy how to bag it, and he was taking bites from it. Didn't hurt. He aimed and reinforced his belief that it was non-venomous, no doubt, and he arrested shortly afterwards and uh, died. 35 years of age. Damn, it's so sad, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, it's just a matter of educating the people to leave the bloody things alone. Yeah. We've well, got a fair bit of the snake done, which is cool. Let's knock out some of the lizard. I'm going to give it some, just some little... Kind of that dashy little lines. He's kind of spiky, so that makes some little sort of spiky sort of little patterns there. Doesn't have to be perfect because the attention's all about the snake. So I'm going to try and smash this out pretty fast. And sometimes it's more freeing and more exciting when you do that. Just like you're scribbling on the back of your high school books or something like that. This is the same sort of thing. You're just free, easy. And the tail on these dragons are actually longer than the body. They've got little spikes all over it, a little bit of pattern there. Oh, it's funny little frog-like feet. Get the last bit of snake here. Because most of it's under the leaf, you don't have to draw that much. You just have to draw the important bits. So that makes it easy to draw, eh? So it's fun how drawing can tell a story. This shows you what an awesome ambush hunter the Death Adder really is. And it's also done not in words, but in pictures. What we have to do now is some serious shading. I'm gonna pop some wiggly wobbly bits down here on the ground. We're just using sort of organic shapes. Shade in a bit here. Because the tail's going up, the shadow's dissipating a little bit. Where, wherever anything's close to the ground, it's got a darker shadow. So this lizard's sort of coming off the ground a bit. Bit of wiggly lines around here. 
So the lizard's snapping down there. The snake's snapping down here. A few action lines. That doesn't hurt. So the shade of the Death Adder's head is not solid because it's up off the ground a little bit. Up behind this leaf here. Coming in, it gets a bit darker as it goes under the body of the snake. That gives it a bit of depth. Chuck a bit of shade on this leaf here. A little bit of shade here. So I'm not using cross hatching, I'm just using hatching, just lines. So, chucking lots of shade in here because you've got lots of objects which is going to cast lots of shadows. And that's the thing with the Death Adder, it just comes out of the shadows to strike its prey. Under each leaf a little bit of shade's cool. And that brings out the leaf that's in front, the foreground leaf. That one's just whizzing in the air, that one. Casting a shadow way over here, I think. I'll put some sort of wiggly pop pop sort of lines on there. These are little organic shapes that you can just sort of chuck on just to make it look a bit like the rough, gnarly old leaves. I've been laying on the ground for a while, so of course they're gnarly. Oh, there's a little pebble up there, a little bit of something up there. And that's a great thing. You're drawing something which is not perfect. So it's cool. You can relax. But it's all, see the shading here. This is what it's about. Get the shading right. And it's kind of cool. Gives it a bit more dimension. Might have to chuck a few more leaves here because it doesn't look like there's enough to hide a death adder in there. Bit of shade there. Pushing it back. Got some little leaves there. So I might chuck another couple of little leaves here. So they look like a bit like an explosion coming out. So this one from 1939's an early one. Survived a death adder bite. When Rosaro Sorbello, nine, was bitten by a death adder on his father's farm on Thursday, September 14, the father, having no knife with him, immediately bit a piece completely out and, and dashed the child to the hospital where he is progressing favorably. Without a doubt, the prompt action of the father saved the boy's life, is the opinion of the medical superintendent. The Death Adder escaped. Lucky Death Adder. I tell you what, that's some interesting fathering right there. So hold still, son. It's going to bite a chunk out of you. So I'm just sort of wiggly lines here. I'm kind of making it up as I go along. I'm just guessing. So some of these lines are a little bit curved. They sort of follow the shape of this. And like I said, it's a good one to do because you can't really get leaves wrong. It's good to practice. And if the whole thing doesn't work, just remember the next one's going to be better because you've had this much more practice. I think we're almost there. So here's this nice quick action scene of the Death Adder having its lunch. And all you gotta do now is grab the eraser. I'll cut little lines up here. We're gonna grab the eraser and we're gonna do some serious erasing. Oh, these big old white erasers. Once you erase the pencil lines, you can see it a bit better. And you got this nice ink drawing. I kinda like the ink drawings because it reminds me more of a comic book. And let's face it, Comic books are way much more fun to read than uh, maths books. Oh, sorry. <laughs> shouldn't say that. Now I've erased a line. I can just pop a few little bits in there. So a bit there. That's a bit of leaf. Some bits, I don't know what's snake and what's leaf. It's just, you know, an explosion of craziness. This uh, marker pen's just about coming to the end of its life. It's gone further in the end, which is why I much prefer a paintbrush or a nib. So here we go. That is the Death Adder. It's the first video I've made in the new studio drawing the Death Adder. Hope you guys like this. Hope you like it so much you're going to subscribe. Or don't. It's not like I'm your dad or anything. See you next time.